Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and our Simple Abundance Year as we follow through Sarah Bon Bronick's 2019 edition of Simple Abundance. I'm so glad you're here with me and sorry again for the long interval between videos this month, but you can tell from my background I'm, I'm moved officially, not anywhere near unpacked or anything. In fact, this has been a very, very challenging week on every level. And I had trouble finding a place today where I could film where there wasn't just tons of stuff in the background because it's hard to even move around right now in the new place. But I'll figure it out. And I didn't want to go any longer without filming a video because we're so far behind in some of the entries. I thought it was a good time to talk about four different entries that all have a letter C word. And they are compliments, complaints, comparisons and compromises. All pretty good words related to the simple abundance principles that we've been talking about this year. So in the October 20th entry about compliments, she makes a good point, and I've said this before in another entry, and sorry, there's new noises here. Earlier, the, the <laughs> Earlier the fridge was on, now it's the furnace behind this door. I'll figure out a new way. I don't like the lighting here either, but I'll figure out a new a new way to of a place where I can film better in this new place. Anyway, back to what I was saying. So she makes a good point in this compliments entry about how when somebody compliments us, why do we so often just downplay it? You know, they might compliment our dress or something and it's like oh this old thing you know I've had this forever or we we just say like oh wow do you really think so you know I actually just had a situation today with a co-worker who gave me a compliment and it was really hard for me to take it and because when especially with my appearance when I look at myself I see all these little flaws and and I yeah, she was complimenting me actually on my eyes and I said like oh you don't notice such and such like because I have a bunch of things about my eyes that bother me and she's like no I never saw those things so it's like why can't I just take a compliment and say thank you so much for saying that you know but it is it is something that I think women especially struggle with right and we talked about the pride coming before the fall that might have been the entry where I mentioned this before where you don't want to be too prideful. But Sarah suggests that we try to take in a compliment and not have any resistance to it. So the definition in the dictionary of compliment is an expression of esteem. Perhaps we have a difficult time accepting compliments because deep down we don't believe we deserve them. When we aren't willing to receive praise, it's because our self-esteem is flagging. Yeah, so just like what I was saying about today's compliment that I couldn't take or even see myself. Sarah says, today, be receptive. Start with the assumption that you're beautiful, dazzling, bootylicious, absolutely fabulous. You're slaying it. Ask spirit to reveal how gorgeous and brilliant you really are. Every time someone pays you a compliment, accept it as if an angel had just whispered spirit's appreciation. That puts a new slant on it, right? Smile and say, thank you. How nice of you to notice. That's kind of a good little phrase to have in your head. Become abundant with your compliments to others as well. We're all so fragile, especially when we put on a brave face. A sincere compliment can penetrate beneath even the most sophisticated masks to soothe some troubled souls. And it's interesting because we are wearing masks and I feel like that's the thing that I'm complimenting people on a lot. Oh, I really like your mask. You know, that's like the new thing now that you see when you see somebody's face. The woman you think needs compliments the least is probably the one who needs them the most. Yeah, sometimes people have this persona of acting like they're just all that. And meanwhile, they're just so insecure inside. And finally, she says, cultivate the habit of giving at least one compliment a day to another human being as well as yourself. 
You'll feel good when you do, and soon it will become one of your habits of being. Just as words can hurt, words can heal. That's an interesting thought. You know how we're doing our gratitude exercise, and I usually do my gratitude journal at night before bed. And I need to find it, because I, I don't know where it is right now. Um, so I've kind of put that aside during this chaotic time, but maybe you could add another thing at the end of the day when you're, or whenever you do your gratitude exercise, that you could compliment yourself. You know, Carolyn, I'm really proud of how you handled that, or you were really a good friend to this person today, or something like that. So give that some thought. So that's compliments. Then we have complaints, right? Now those probably come easy. <laughs> and she makes a good point in saying that when you're amongst other people, then you can just fall into this sort of whirlwind of complaining back and forth and just griping about everything. And I think that's true. And I spend a lot of time on my own. And I think back to when I was married and the end of the day was just a constant you know, a rehashing of things that went on in both of our lives. And there were a lot of dramatic things like, I can't believe this, you know, something to do with my employees at the time or something like that, or the company I worked for or whatever. And it's interesting since I've lived alone for over 10 years now, I don't do as much complaining because I don't have anybody to just rattle those things off at the end of the day. So maybe I'm in a different vibration, even though I'm sure I have complaints, but it's just a different sort of sharing. So I can see what she's saying about when you get together with friends that you, you can tend to just go like, oh, you never believe this or that. And actually I saw some friends this week and I found myself starting to do that, you know, saying like, oh, this is so stressful or ah, you know, where if I were by myself, I just guess I would just, I don't know, would I not be feeling those complaints or would I just have them bottled up? I'm not sure. That's just an aside from my own life. Try new outlets to channel hostility, she says, and that's instead of getting together with your friends and just griping. Shout in the shower, blow off steam as you walk, or scream in your car as you wait in traffic. It's interesting, I hadn't read this until just a minute ago, and this week, I mean, it was a really tough week, but I, I had such a lump in my throat so many times. I was screaming in my car. I did it like at least five times, because nobody can hear you when you're doing that. If I tried to scream in the shower, then somebody might call the police, but if you're in your car, that is actually a really good place to scream. And it, if you do have a lump in your throat or you're just trying not to cry or you've been crying so much and you just screaming can really, really help for sure. I'm not suggesting that we suppress our negative feelings, Sarah says, but the petty stuff we're often foaming at the mouth about isn't worth the breath it steals. Our words are powerful, so powerful that they can change our reality, the quality of our days and nights. We talked about that last time, about having a choice in how you choose to evaluate the day or start your day or like turn it around, right? Moaning rarely makes either of, of any of the people around you feel better. In fact, it often makes everyone feel worse. Learning to shrug is the beginning of wisdom. Hmm, that's quite a statement. Alternately, learn to be creative about your complaining. And remember we talked about the book Wish Craft by Barbara Sher? She had a good point that if you really feel like you're about to explode, that if there are people around you, you just say like, okay, and what did she call it? She called it a hard time session. She just said, just announce to the people that are around you, you know, tell everyone in close, close range that you're mad, nervous, fed up, or not going to take it anymore, and then tell them for the next five minutes you're going to totally lose it, and tell them not to pay any attention to you and not to take it personally, then run amok. You could do that when you're alone, I suppose, too. 
You'll probably end up feeling much better without having to offer apologies or wipe away tears. You may even end up laughing. Today, if you must complain, at least be creative about it. And she says, I hear you. You know, I don't think I ever mentioned this before, but I had a life coach that one time said, if you're ever really mad, you know those noodles that they have for swimming? And if you can go out like into your garage or something, somewhere where you have those. And I did it one time. <laughs> and you just take it and you just slam it, you know, and, and you can just like hit things and stuff and it doesn't do any damage, but it allows you to just be like, I can't believe you said that to me. <laughs> like, you know, it just allows you to get it out. Like, I have told you before, I have to feel my feelings. And whether that means I'm like totally having an emotional breakdown, so be it. And thank you for all of you that are watching that were there for me this week in person too, because I know it was a lot. But, but if you're angry, it's just as bad as holding in any sort of sadness or grief or regret or other things like that. So let it out. Go scream in your car if you have to. I also remember something about you know the Live Strong bracelets? There was something else, and I feel like it was church-based, so I don't know what organization put it out, but you would wear a bracelet like that, and you were trying to wear it, and you were trying to remind yourself not to complain, like not to be negative. And if you were, if you were complaining or negative, then you had to cut it off and you had to start a new one. So something like that, maybe, you need a reminder. Maybe you need like a, a swear jar or something like, and you're putting money in it every time you complain. But I like what she's saying. It's like, don't, don't try to suppress it. Just realize that it's something that you might have inside, but recognize it and try to not bring everybody around you down. Maybe just have that five minute hard time session and get it out and then just move on instead of making it the whole evening. Moving on to comparisons. This is a big one in our current life, don't you think? Because now, now we have, I'm not saying that in the past you didn't drive by your neighbor's house and envy their car or whatever, but now we have social media and it's so much more easy to see things and really look at your own life and just kind of go like, wow. They just went on vacation to this amazing place or something, and I haven't been on a plane in five years, you know. So, comparisons, I think we all do it. And I heard a statement, comparisons are the thief of joy. I think that was what it was. Yeah. Because it is easy. I mean, you could be happy... If you had nothing to compare your own life to, and also I suppose comparison has to do with judgment, not only yourself judging where you are at in relation to other people, but it could be other people judging you as well. But if you didn't have any of that, then you probably would be more at ease and, and owning your where you're at and not feeling like a lack or that it's not good enough, I guess. Comparisons are irresistible, but insidious, and often our self-torture of choice. Wow. Today, let's meditate on not coveting our neighbor's figure, home, clothes, income, or career. Not to mention accomplishments, achievements, awards, recognition, and fame. Usually, it's only one woman whose boundless blessings push our buttons of raging, raging insecurities. We really don't care if most of the world has more than we have. We only care if she has and we have not. Is there anyone in your life that you're really envious of? I'm thinking back to Cheryl Richardson's questions in an entry a couple of months ago where we were supposed to write down if there was anybody's life that we envied. I didn't think of that as a bad thing, as being sort of resentful of their happiness. But it was more like, what do I 
what do I want to emulate in my own life that someone else has? But I suppose there could be some comparison in that. I cannot ruminate on coveting, jealousy, envy, and making oneself utterly miserable with comparisons unless I was vaguely familiar with this sin against authenticity. That's what Sarah says. So it's a sin against authenticity. What do you think about that? When I think about that, I think that's spot on. Because if you were being authentic, then that would be a one of a kind thing. That would just be you. It wouldn't be that you were trying to be a certain way because you wanted status or you were trying to keep up with somebody else. So I totally get that. Even if we aren't comparing, they can hurt, comparisons can hurt us in profound ways. They undermine our confidence, shut down our flow of creative energy, short circuit our access to power, deplete our self-esteem, suck the life force from our marrow. Covening destroys what is sacred within. Instead of comparing yourself to another woman, why not just take out a billboard at Hollywood and Vine and remind the world how fantastic you are? What? Or make up a smaller one and put it where you can see it every day. That's a thought. Remember on my desk I showed you the mirror that said, I love you, Carolyn? The next time you're tempted to compare your life to another's, pause for a moment. Remind yourself over and over again that there is no competition on the spiritual plane. The blessings or nemesis has have received also wait. The blessings your nemesis has received also can be yours as soon as you are really ready to receive them with an open heart, all the good fortune created just for you. And when will that be? As soon as you can bless the woman that you secretly curse. As soon as you can give thanks for her happiness and success as much as your own because it demonstrates the abundance of real life. I can't think of anybody that's coming to my mind like she I didn't read the whole thing but she did say something like sometimes it can be a really good friend I can think of situations like I mentioned this social media I can think of especially during this pandemic like people that have families people that have significant others and they're like out doing stuff and I'm definitely envious envious of that because I would like to have somebody to go out and do things with and and have a family to go on vacation with or whatever so I'm comparing my own life I guess to that but I can't think of somebody like that like a woman that I'm that irks me because she just gets everything she wants and I don't I don't know maybe you have somebody like that in your life maybe it's a family member that can be also difficult and the last one is compromises. And compromises are a part of every relationship, right? I mean, whether you're single, married, with children, or without, it's not possible to get through a day without agreeing to at least one compromise, Sarah says. There are little compromises and there are bigger ones. Tolerable compromises are those we enter into fully with complete knowledge in advance of exactly what we're surrendering. The other kind of compromises, the one many of us make in a day, are the strong, silent type. They're strong because we're stuck with them and silent because they're unconscious or unspoken. So when I think of that, I think about maybe you're at your job and you know something that your boss says is wrong, but it's just easier to just not say something to the contrary, right? Compromises are the art of the bottom line. We can bend only so far and then we break. Knowing just how far you can bend is the first step in making sane agreements, but this isn't as easy as it sounds. The more complicated life becomes, the simpler your bottom line must be. How about this? What must you have from this situation? What do you absolutely need? If you need it, you must have it. It's non-negotiable. 
if you didn't need it to survive, whatever it is would be a need. It wouldn't be a need, it would be a want. Unfortunately, wants are the currency of compromise. I want, you want, we all want, which is why we bargain. Yeah. And she just talks about how when you're compromising, you can just sort of dread things. Like, maybe your spouse really likes to go watch race car driving, or I don't know, that's the first thing that came to my mind. I don't even know where that came from, but, or something, and maybe you're just not into that. And so you just compromise and you go. And I suppose in a relationship situation, you hope that maybe if you go with them to that then maybe they go to the ballet with you or something if that's your thing but if you're dreading a compromise it is going to be a soul-sucking sort of thing like the comparison one that we were talking about and in every case she tells us try to see the other person's point of view be flexible be as generous as you can without gagging <laughs> ask for the highest good of all parties to be achieved trust your instincts Pay attention to physical clues, especially your gut. It's there not only to aid in digestion, but to serve as a reliable aid in discerning what's best for you. And above all, follow Janice Joplin's advice, and that is, quote, don't compromise yourself. You're, you are all you've got. Yeah, I, I would think you wouldn't want to just always be compromising. That would also be another uh, objection to authenticity because if you're just constantly going along with the flow to just sort of keep peace and then you're not really being authentic about what you want to do or what your needs are or she said some things about needs and wants eventually that's just not gonna work out right so it's another thing like we've talked about the yin and the yang and the balance and all that it's another thing to make sure that you kind of have to know that compromises are a part of life but hopefully in every situation there's a give and a take and you're not always the one that's bending to everybody else's will right something to think about let me know what you think about these ones so we had Compliments, complaints, comparisons, and compromises. All really good words to ponder. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you leave me a comment. I've been missing you guys, but just haven't been in the state of mind to be able to hit the record button. <laughs> Hopefully it will get better, and I feel better just even talking to you, so I'm glad I did a video. Love to you all, and I'll see you on the next video.